Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to class. Uh, let's pray and uh, begin. Well, Prince, could you please lead us? Father, hallowed be your name, Lord. Uh, we thank you for this day, O oh Lord Father. We thank you for another day in our lives, O oh Lord Father. As we gather in your name, O oh Lord Father, here, O oh Lord Father, as we're going to listen, O oh Lord Father, help us, O oh Lord Father, to receive oh, everything that you have stored for us, O oh Lord Father, for this day. And just we pray that uh, your spirit will help us, O oh Lord Father, to understand, O oh Lord Father, and to receive and learn O oh lord father everything that you are teaching we just submit everything into your precious hands O oh lord father in jesus mighty precious name we pray amen amen and thank you prince so we will recap what we learned last week and then move ahead from there uh, we saw that we serve a speaking god and that god uh, wants to speak to us and words are so powerful they affect our thoughts they affect our emotions um, and words can bring hope at the same time you know words can bring uh, correction they can bring direction to all of us and so uh, it's really something that we desire to hear from god and we said that over the years uh, when we look at church history we uh, observe that first the church went into the dark ages Okay, around 480. But since then, what God has been doing is uh, uh, like uh, 400 to 1400 AD are considered as the dark ages because there's a lot of persecution and uh, you don't you don't hear of um, restorative moves of God during that period. But after that, like 1500 AD, 1600 AD, we listed out and said that. God has done many things to restore, um, you know, the the power of the church, and uh, uh, so certain teachings people had a deeper understanding about it. Whether it was water baptism, holiness, or um, you know, if it was grace, uh, if it was uh, baptism in the Holy Spirit, and also the move of God. So uh, miracles, healing moves. Uh, people began to understand and people began to uh, sort of minister in these areas. And now what is happening is we are seeing that God is uh, restoring the understanding of the fivefold ministry offices. So when we are saying restoring, it doesn't mean that it is something new. It was always there. If we go back to the Bible, there are prophets of God. There are apostles, um, prophets. We can see them in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. We can see apostles rising up even in the early church. So it's nothing new. It's already been there. But we are seeing that um, we as believers are receiving a better understanding about what it is and how to really function in it. So that is what we are calling as God is restoring to the church. So all this we saw. And then we described that there is a progression in uh, the scriptures. The manner in which we can minister the prophetic, uh, we could say that there are certain levels. And we mentioned that uh, all believers because all of us, uh, once we are born again, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside us. The Holy Spirit is able to impart uh, the gifts that he carries with him. And so all believers, to some extent, are able to function in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And because we are talking about the prophetic, we are saying prophecy. All believers can function in it. So we called it as the gift of prophecy. And remember, I, I told us uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there is a list of the gifts of the Spirit. And then, uh, you know, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul encourages all believers. Like how in verse in 13, he was talking about love is important for all believers. And he continues to desire, earnestly desire the gifts, but uh, that you may prophesy. And in that same passage, the end he says, do it in an orderly fashion. 
everyone can prophesy one by one because you say that unless you could prophesy many people could prophesy so it is possible for all believers to prophesy now having said this we also considered that uh, people could move in the prophetic to a great extent so we looked at a passage from romans chapter 12 So Romans chapter twelve verses four through eight lists out some gifts that we can call as grace gift. So to a greater extent, people are able to minister in the prophetic. Uh, so such uh, people or such ministries, we can call it as prophetic ministry. Okay, not everyone can have that. A uh, grace to minister in the prophetic ministry, but everyone can prophesy. Okay, so we are understanding the difference, isn't it? Uh, and so, grace gift of uh, prophecy, and then the next level or the highest uh, level would be to function as a prophet. Now, to be a prophet, one cannot uh, yeah. um, sort of pick. Because Ephesians chapter four verses eleven through twelve teaches us that it is God who gives. the gifts uh, which are the fivefold ministry offices one of which is prophet so one needs to be assigned by god to be a prophet okay not everyone can can become a prophet just by desiring it but paul says earnestly desire the gifts that you but that you may prophesy so is it possible for everyone to prophesy yes but is it possible for anyone to become a prophet no okay you got it so this is the progression and we understood regarding that progression so the nice thing is that all of us uh, uh, you know to some extent we can prophesy and uh, learn how to prophesy uh, and of course keep increasing in it in our daily lives uh, for example you know we we've, we've talked about this in the uh, supernatural class when uh, we are uh, led by the spirit of god you know and the gifts are activated let's say somebody is a musician you can flow in prophetic music isn't isn't it or somebody is in leadership you can uh, hear from god and make strategic decisions so we can all apply the prophetic in our lives but those who are able to apply it to a larger extent uh, those who, who are carrying prophetic ministries you know, they would be uh, you would see that uh, there is a greater demonstration of of the same you know prophetic and it would manifest more and a prophet we stated two things one we said is that they carry authority and they carry governmental responsibility remember these these words now if if at all you know uh, if if you are getting confused what is the difference so somebody who is a prophet carries governmental authority and uh, governmental responsibility so they are able to minister at the highest level even affecting large regions nations uh, leaders of of countries um, you know so so that's how they they do it they can even call forth moves of god in the in the body of christ so these are huge things it's not just about reaching out to another believer or a set of believers and saying you know i hear that the lord is saying this to you it's more than that and god holds them responsible i'm sure god holds everyone responsible but because the the function which a prophet primarily has the role which they have is to prophesy they are they are uh, more accountable to god uh, yeah, uh, regarding the use of the grace and gift that god has given them so we saw all these things now uh, coming to uh, a section where we mentioned you know there's a testimony that pastor has shared and um, uh, we all probably have testimonies like this uh, and we then finally touched upon uh, the first person who is called as a prophet in the word of god which would be abraham and we understood that his way of ministering in the prophetic was not uh, the typical 
manner that we understand today when we think somebody is a prophet uh, you know immediately we get that term thus says the lord and then they they are saying many things to us but abraham does not seem to be that kind of a prophet so why did god really call him a prophet because he was one who was communicating with god one who was communing with god and then we stated that uh that that is really prayer right and so in the life of a prophet prayer played a huge part because they one is speaking to god one is hearing from god and that's the that's the place or if i may put it you know that that's like the prophecy to really be able to hear from god and communicate with god okay so prayer uh, uh, like with prayer will make us more prophetic okay uh, so we need to keep that in mind now in the case of abraham some of the other things which we can recognize is uh, see when we say prophet hearing from god there are different ways in which abraham also heard from god we know when god promised him you know a very uh, victorious future uh, he had a vision you when you read his life you'll see that uh, dream uh, and uh, when it comes to sodom and uh, sodom and gomorrah uh, he's actually discussing with god you know back and forth can we do this can we do that so there's a lot of communication okay through, through prayer through revelation a dream visions so it is there abraham is a prophet of god and no wonder when uh, that situation came when abimelech and all his people were uh, afflicted god said you will have deliverance but you should ask a prophet to pray for you and then he told okay abraham uh, this prophet will pray for you and all of you will be healed so when we say prophet all i'm trying to uh, remind us is like revelation from god so that is very much uh, necessary in the prophet to be able to hear from god now let's move on from here so abraham we have an idea moses and aaron even moses uh, is uh, called as a prophet now in the case of moses uh, what initially happened is if we recall the burning bush experience uh, god told him you go to pharaoh uh, uh, so then what did god say yeah. okay fine in exodus 7, all there in our notes exodus 7 1 uh, if you're tracking with me then this is in the pdf version on page page 12. Exodus chapter 7 verse 1. So the Lord said, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. Okay. So, notice there that, uh, yeah, I just, I noticed. Yeah. So, uh, Exodus 7 1. Moses is not ready to go. He's making excuses before God. So God is giving him a solution. And what is he saying? I made you as God to Pharaoh. Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. Just think about it. See, when we say prophet, in this context, what does it mean? Moses is... Uh, apprehensive about going to Pharaoh, but God is encouraging him and saying, you know, you will carry authority, you go, be bold. If you can't speak, don't worry. I'll send Aaron. He will be your prophet means what? He will speak for you. That's what it means. Okay. Now, if we look up that word in Hebrew, it's the word Nabi. Nabi. Okay. You have to remember this word, Nabi. Uh, it is used about 309 times in the Old Testament. And this word Nabi simply means a person who speaks for another person. Okay. So 
Aaron will be your prophet means that he will be your mouthpiece. So being a prophet is what? A mouthpiece of God. Understood? So the message comes from God or God is the source and we deliver the message. So in our context, you know, I, I know this generation, probably you don't know what a postman is <laughs> because you're <laughs> in Instagram people. But uh, uh, if you know in your recent history or even right now we have postmen, they come and just give the letter, isn't it? It's like that. There is a message from God. So as a prophet, what do I do? I'm just delivery person and I better deliver it accurately. Understood. So that is the main understanding of who a prophet is. A mouthpiece. Somebody's mouthpiece. In this case, a mouthpiece. Yeah, we, are, we are talking about being a mouthpiece of God. Messages from God in an undiluted way, in the essence of what God is saying, we communicate it to people. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's continue. Now we said uh, the in Hebrew, the term Nabi means somebody who speaks for someone. Okay. Now there are other terms which are also uh, equated with being a prophet. Let us look at it. So First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 29. Here we have a, a, a uh, a passage, I will quickly read that scripture. It says, Now the acts of King David, first and last, indeed they are written in the book of Samuel the seer, in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the book of Gad the seer. Okay, so when we look up those words, seer, prophet, seer. There are three different Hebrew words. There are three different Hebrew words. But whom are they describing? Whom are they describing? Who, who is Samuel, Nathan, Gad? They're all prophets. So three different Hebrew words to describe prophets. Mouthpiece of God. The reason why these three words are used, we'll, we'll go to it. But these words would be, one word seer there is, Roe. And uh, another word, uh, seer, there is Jose. And Nabi, we all know, right? Prophet, Nabi. So when we look at Roe and Jose, basically what it is uh, telling us is it's the process in which the prophet is receiving the communication from God. So in English, easily it has been translated into seer. But Roe and Jose means... There is a visualization process involved. Meaning, these prophets, what happens is, they'll get a vision. They'll see a dream. They'll see a picture. Okay. So, that is the way in which they receive most of their communication. So, there is a visualization process that is involved in receiving the message. It's as simple as that. Okay. Now, Nabi. What about Nabi? This term Nabi, again in the book of Amos, the word Nabi is used. Uh, it is, as we are calling it, uh, uh, prophet. And there's, a, there's also another relatable word in Hebrew for this. In Micah chapter 2 and verse 11, which is Nataf. Okay? So, we understood Roy and Jose. It has to do with the visualization process. Now we are looking at the words Nabi and Nataf. What does it mean? You know, it simply means that the process in which, through which one receives the word of God is through inspiration. Okay? One is visualization, whereas the other seems to be inspiration. Inspiration is like flowing forth. Inspiration is like bubbling up. Okay. Uh, so, how does the word of God get released? These prophets 
may not necessarily see any pictures. They open their mouth and it's like a river. River is flowing. They're saying this and that and this. Now, if we may ask them, okay, what did you see? What did you hear? They may actually not have any pictures to describe for us because it's through inspiration. It's flowing. Okay. Uh, it's bubbling up. And the word nataf, it, uh, it also means like oozing out or distill. Oozing is, it ha it, you know, the way we understand that is little, little by little. When something is oozing, little, little, you know, it's, it's sort of coming out. So in drops, in um, uh, like, you know, in, in pieces, the, the word is coming out. So first, let's say they start to share something. They'll say a little bit and then a little more will come. And then a little more will come, you know, bits and pieces. So this is the way that God uh, mostly communicated with prophets, with these two methods. One is the visualization process. One is the inspiration process. Now, we must also understand that there are times when um, one can receive a word from God in either of the ways. We must not box up people and say, oh, this is a seer and this is a, uh, you know, like a Nabi inspiration. In our own personal experience also, maybe most of the time we, we see something. But that doesn't mean that God is not going to speak. Isn't it? Like through inspiration. It can happen because God is a very creative God. He may choose to speak anyway. We have to be open. Okay, and we can strengthen both both of these, uh, uh, like our experience with both of these methods. So if we'll go later and we'll see, right? Like there are certain certain um, uh, steps to prophesy accurately, to bring that word from God accurately, uh, which involves like interpretation. So that depends on us. We when we work hard then we are in a better place to actually interpret correctly. Because after all, we are what? Just mouthpiece. We should not add to what God is saying or we should not subtract from what God is saying. Right? That is the effort that we want to make. Um, and yeah, so just you know, have all this in mind. Just have all this in mind. We'll see how exactly to do that. But when we strengthen ourselves in interpretation, reasoning, and all, we will become better. Now, similarly, just because we are doing that, we should we shouldn't uh, stop from being strengthened uh, in the inspiration side of things, right? So sometimes you just wait on the Lord, and things just come. So we need to strengthen ourselves in every way and be ready, whichever way God wants to speak. Okay, we should be in a position to release the authentic, genuine word of God. Now, when God speaks, um, there are prophets that have explained it as a sense of urgency or a sense of compulsion uh, that they really wanted to speak that word. Amos chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, uh, where it says, Surely the Lord God does nothing. Unless he reveals a secret to his servants, the prophets, a lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? So Amos is talking about his experience where he says that, you know, when in a, in a jungle, if a lion roars, what do you think will happen? All the other creatures, do you think they'll hear it? Yeah, yeah they know a lion has roared. Like there's a, there's a definite knowing. This has happened. So as a prophet, he's saying his experience. And he's saying when God speaks, you know, I feel like th there's something, you know, something to be released, something to be spoken, something is be, uh, done by the Lord. So there's a very definite sense of uh, God doing something. OK, so that's what he shares. Uh, and uh, yeah, so. There's, there, there's that sense of compulsion uh, where a prophet wants to release the word. Now, we'll go into talking about um, 
the method in which you know just basic we'll touch on just the basic over here uh, the visualization process okay but i think i'll have to start that in the next class so we'll stop right now uh, but so far you know based on this uh, is are there any questions any yeah uh, ma'am like uh, now we are seeing this two right like uh, nabi prophet and the seer prophet so it's like uh, it's uh, how god communicates so and now we are seeing uh, like also seeing that all believe all believers can also prophesy mm -hmm. so as we are telling like all believers can receive or prophesy through uh, seeing or through inspiration but still not prophets as it was as we have seen in the scripture right yeah so they are not prophets basically their their uh, their position is not as a prophet but even as a believer these processes apply the process will be the same but yeah correct process could be the same Sure. So, all right, let's uh, wrap up today's class. Uh, could somebody from the online batch pray, please? Pastor, shall I pray? I think Jacken is praying. Yeah, please go ahead, Jacken. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time, Lord God, Father. Father, help us, Lord, to understand what you have for us, Lord God, by understanding the prophet, Lord God. Father, you have called each of us, Lord God. You've given each of us grace gifts, Father God. Help us, Lord, to tune ourselves to your spirit, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord, that you're teaching us, Lord. Thank you for choosing us, Father God. Help us, Lord, to hear you, Lord God, and put it into practice what you have for each and every one of us, Lord God, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, thank you, Jackin. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. And we shall meet in the next class. Bye for now. Thank you.